Welcome to Easy Eats with Chef Eve. My name is Chef Eve Deshane, and today we're in the uh, garden here at the Greener Village uh, with our, our garden coordinator, Allison Juta. Welcome, Allison, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about uh, our gardens. I wouldn't be able to cook or share the bounty without Allison and her lovely gardens. So, gar Allison, um, tell us a little bit about the gardens and a little bit about what you do here today. Okay, so we are basically um, a community garden. Yeah. So that has two components. One is the community garden where people can come and grow their own, and that's primarily for our own clients okay. and our volunteers. And then we have one or two people from the community who actually come in as, as well. And then we have four open greenhouses that are in use, and that is to supply our clients with fresh food, literally picked that morning. So you said for clients, for volunteers, and for community, is there, is there a cost to this, Alison? Um, the clients get it free. Okay. The volunteers pay a very nominal fee, and then we ask $20 per year for the outsiders who come in. And with that $20, you get your expertise, and what else? Yeah. Well, the, the bed is prepared for them. They okay. don't have to bring their own fertilizers or anything like that. We use organic fertilizers, Okay. and uh, they can just come in and grow. The only stipulation is at the end of the season, they take this stuff off, and uh, we can then close it down for the winter and then start again for the next year. So perfect, so they're responsible for the bed. So it'd be like yeah. their garden at home, so they're responsible yeah. for weeding it, for gra uh, for, uh, for watering it and yeah. stuff like that. We're just supplying yeah. the space here. Is Absolutely, that... yeah. Okay, cool. That's what most community gardens will do. And we have four of them in Fredericton. Four of them in Fredericton, and we just have to be one of them? We oh, have to fantastic, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, what, I mean, lovely gardens here, uh, we have how many do we have in the garden? At the moment we have 22 of the specific size, okay. so that's this one here. So how big are these roughly, Alison? These are 12 by 6, Okay. and then we have some smaller plots down the side, over the far side there. Um, they are 4 foot wide and probably about 8 foot long, so they're slightly smaller but they are as good to grow in as these. It depends what's, what you want to grow. Well, that's it. I, mean, I know that you have done classes before on uh, square foot gardening yeah, and yeah. things like that. So this is... Yeah, this, is, this, this bed is specifically square foot. So there's a question that you may not have an answer for, but how much food could you possibly get out of this if you manage it properly? Well, again, it depends on what you plant. Yeah, well, again, yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, I, I mean, for, for someone, I mean, yeah, the, the yeah. regular, like you want your tomatoes, your cucumbers, or something yeah. that we would give out, yeah. what would you... With uh, a 12 by 6 garden, you could probably feed four people. Okay. Yeah, if, if you were judiciously planting, so you plant early in the season, um, get rid of that stuff, then plant some more so that it goes right through to when we shut down at the end of October. Okay, no, and, that, and that's just yeah. with fresh produce yeah. all season long yeah. Yeah. for people? Yeah. That's fantastic. That's savings. Yeah, that's savings. That's why, you know, I want to try and expend, extend this a bit next year again. So are, are you going to be offering online classes kind of like I do in the kitchen for people who want to know yeah. what beasties they should be avoiding in the yeah. garden and things like that? Yeah, I'd love to. The gardens, it mm. must take a lot of physical resources, it, may, it must take a lot of <laughs> financial resources. Yeah. How does the Greener Village go about getting or funding yeah. all of this when we're trying to get money for food and all we those We look kinds for of donations. Donations, yeah. okay. Yeah, so um, the soil was donated okay. by a company called Cardwell Compost from Sussex, so oh, it's okay. local and it's, it's absolutely um, uh, pe pesticide, uh, herbicides and whatever free, so that's really, really good. We, yeah, I was going to yeah. ask that yeah. too. We this try to grow organically here. Absolutely, don't we? yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we try our very best not to bring in stuff that's not organic, except we do get the occasional pests that we might have to deal with, but we try and do that by picking them off literally. <laughs> picking them leaf by leaf. <laughs> leaf okay, by leaf. yeah, yeah. Um, then this year we've had funding from Scotts Grow for Good. Oh, fantastic! And thank you to them very, very much. Um, you know, it's been wonderful. We have to do a three-minute video for them shortly, <laughs> so we'll be doing that soon. <laughs> Um, and uh, we've had uh, the board very kindly allowed me to buy this hemlock to replace the beds because they were 10 years old and they were falling apart. So we got that locally as well from a small sawmill, which is very kind of them. Um, and they gave us a very good price on that. So these have been rebuilt. They'll last another 10 years, hopefully. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, so, it, I did notice yeah. that the, the garden did yeah. get a lovely facelift this yeah. year and it, it works It works really, really we nice. Really, we just beat the date, 
we actually finished these bids on the day that we were supposed to have them open. <laughs> so. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So, yeah, cutting it close, but we can, we here at the Green Village, we always yeah. make it happen, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. And we've got wonderful students this year. Well, that's it. Um, I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. How do you how do you staff this? I mean, you're 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 an <laughs> army of one, but I mean, there's a lot of people. So uh, I know that you yeah. you're open for volunteers. We were talking yeah. to Alexa about volunteer opportunities, yeah. but um, uh, how else do wonderful. we? Wonderful. I've had some wonderful volunteer groups this year. Thanks to all of them as well. I can't name all of them because it'd be right off camera. It would be far yeah. too long. Um, and we get seed students. We get Canada summer job students. And we've had uh, UNB students this year as well. Oh, that's fantastic. In the summer. So. But the trouble is, when they leave in September, all this weeding's got to be done. Yep. All the picking's got to be done. And we've picked 333 kilos of both leaves and tomatoes and whatever else so 333 far this year. 333 kilos. Yep. Wow. That's... Since, since the beginning of May. Um, we should probably pick about five or 600 kilos because we're a little bit low on this year because we've had to do a whole lot of rebuilds, which... Absolutely. It's not going to be as much as we do normally. Now, that but translates still. into what dollar-wise, just so everyone gets an idea of how much the gardens contribute to the overall. Last year, we did $17,000 wow. worth of, of fresh produce. Wow, that's... Uh, but it'll be a little bit less this year because we've got, you know, we, we've, we've had to build and we've been a bit slower in getting stuff going. But still, yeah. $17,000 is, is, is a produce. lot yeah. of yeah. Uh, produce that And we should out. land up closing down in about mid-November. And we're going to try and... We're, we're going to build some hoop houses. Okay. Um, which will extend the season. So next year we'll be able to get going quicker and we'll be able to extend further next year as well. So there's always yeah, there's progress. Always progress and, progress and, and developments. And we're going to put in a proper water system next year here in this garden, which will run off the roof. Okay. So that's going to be great. So we've got lots of things in progress and lots of things going to, to fruition. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an ongoing project. So you must Growing have a, always is. <laughs> yeah, you must have a waiting list for people to want to have access to yes. these beds, do yeah. you? Yeah, I have about five or, five or six people for next year Perfect. already waiting. And priority is to our clients? Yes. Thanks, Allison. We'll be back after this to take a peek at the garden beds we use to uh, grow the produce for our clients here at the Greener Village. Welcome back. Uh, we're now in uh, Greenhouse One, our uh, tomato and uh, basil garden. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring everyone in here to show them how we can also grow food in buckets. So Allison, tell us a little bit about what this project is right here. Well, we didn't have the money to actually put in raised beds here. So I went out to the public and said, please give me five gallon buckets. And we got a lot of five gallon buckets. I still need more. <laughs> we always need more, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, but, uh, and also I got some really good compost and um, Scott's gave us a lot of their product, which is a very good fertilizer. They've got a They've actually got a, a new fertilizer, which is totally organic. Okay, cool. Which is great. And that's why we're doing so well here. We've picked um, 80 kilos so far of, of these uh, tomatoes, various different types. This is the little bumblebee that we were talking about. That's, that's what it looks like growing. Oh, that's cool. Um, so different, yeah. so, so different types. So how many varieties in this garden I do we have? I think we've got about 11 or 12 okay, this year. Cool. Yeah. Nice. I've, I've sort of narrowed it slightly. And we've also got basil here. Um, that's what basil looks like. And it's about to go to seed, so we're going to have to take its top off if we want to carry on. Growing so that's all you need yeah. to do is just take the top off, off and, to, and, to it'll, keep it and it'll yeah. keep on getting leafy. Oh, that, yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, is there a reason why you're growing your basil in with your tomatoes? I know they go great in a salad together, yeah. but... But uh, basically, basil keeps away some of the um, tomato hornworm, which is the main problem. It's a, it's a butterfly. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, this tends to keep it away. Here we are. Here's a bee coming up to me now. There you go. Yeah. So they kind of live in harmony. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, my grandfather used to read a book. He used to call it was called Roses Love Garlic. Yes. And yes. it showed so that this is kind of this in action. Yeah. Same oh, thing. Cool. Same sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, so that's basically where we're at with this. Well, no, that's fantastic. And we'll do it again next year. This is a, a drip irrigation system. Um, so that's why you sound it's sounding like rain, but it's not. Um, do you or can you reuse the soil? Not easily because the actual roots will go right to the bottom of the bucket okay. and they will t pretty well take up the entire bucket. 
So what we do is we, we replace it every year. You replace it every year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you'd be looking for donations of soil yeah. and yeah. stuff yeah. like that yeah. and compost? Yep. So they just yeah. reach out to you? Um, I reach out to certain people that I know. You reach out to yes. certain people? Okay. Yeah. But can people who, oh, who do want pleasure. to have yeah. stuff and they want to yeah. help yeah. the garden project They can here. bring in a bag of soil or a bag of compost at any time. Lovely. I'll, I'll happily have it. <laughs> Fantastic. We're always short. Always yeah. short. Yeah, always looking for stuff. Yeah. So we're in Greenhouse 2 now. Tell me a little bit about what we're growing here in Greenhouse 2. We've got about 16 varieties in here. Sweet peppers for one. Okay. Ground cherries. Mm -hmm. Lots of pepper, other peppers. Uh, we've got a little baby patio. Um, there we go. Oh, a little mini eggplant about mini the size eggplant. of an egg. Yep. Cool. Zucchini. Uh huh. Over that side, we've got lots of uh, beans. Nice. Kale. Kale. Yep. Um, this is rutabaga for later on. Rutabaga being turnip. We've got broccoli coming in through here. And we've got cucumbers over there that we picked for this morning. Uh, carrots, lettuce. And right down back, we've got beets. Perfect. And I noticed that you've got flowers throughout the garden again. Is that just to beautify it or is that again like some of the them, basil? Yeah, some of them are what we call trap crops. In other words, that they trap. Uh, they, they're more interesting to a bug that is going to be eating the, the, oh, okay. co the, the food. So they'll go and eat that rather. So a decoy. Yeah, a decoy. Oh, yeah. right, cool. Like, like the cabbage white butterfly, which came from England originally. Okay. In the 18 somethings with some hay bales that came through. It loves anything that is a, a coal crop. In other words, it, it will go for the kale, it'll go for cabbages, it'll go for cauliflowers. So that, that's what we're trying to get away from. Okay, yeah. so you put the pretty flowers in yeah. there so they would go yeah. there They'll instead. go to the nasturtiums instead. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. And nasturtiums, of course, are edible. So here we are again in our gardens, but we're in front of, uh, I guess, I want to call them my beehives because I'm the resident beekeeper here at the Greener Village. But uh, the bees have a great uh, place here I guess you have at least 10,000 plus volunteers <laughs> pollinating your Absolutely. garden. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Hugely important. Yeah. And it's a great project and uh, that, that's being funded here by the Greener Village. Um, I do this because it's definitely just a, it's a passion project for me. Um, I used to do it as a kid and, uh, and, it's, and it's really, really fun and we do get uh, the proceeds from it as yep. well. Yep, and the, the honey money goes back into your kitchen funds, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. it does. And the honey money <laughs> goes back into our kitchen funds. So um, can you tell us how important bees are to gardens? Well, any form of pollinator, whether it's a bee or a butterfly, is terribly important to us because we wouldn't, the world would not survive without bees and pollinators and whatever else. But, uh, you know, we need pollinators desperately. Um, the natural pollinators are dying away. Go to the Xerxes Society and you'll see, you know, they're, they're, they're putting out very dire predictions about pollination for, for food. So either we've got to find an, an alternative to pollination, but these guys, if we've got them, we so need them. It's really something very important. And my girls are doing their job for sure. Oh, absolutely. So now that we've seen these gardens and all mm -hmm. that and the lovely bounty that can be offered, let's go back into the uh, learning kitchen yep. and I'll show you guys how to make a really simple uh, recipe that uh, I used to have almost nightly at the dinner table when I went to my grandparents' place. Absolutely. Perfect. Fantastic. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, I'm uh, back here in the kitchen now with uh, garden coordinator Allison uh, Juta from the Greener Village. And uh, we're going to make the uh, lovely uh, marinated salad. My grandmother used to make this marinated salad all the time, and it came from the garden. I used to sit down at her dinner table at least two or three times a week, and this was the salad that happened every week. So I'm going to show everyone how to do it. But before we do that, Allison, um, these are pretty tomatoes. They don't look like a regular cherry tomato. What kind of tomato are they? It's called bumblebee. Cool. And it's brand new on the market. Oh, really? So we've grown it this time, the first time, and it's turning out really nice. And that's what I like about tomatoes. There's so many different varieties. How many varieties do we grow in the garden? Uh, at the moment, we've got about 15, oh. ranging from the little tiny, tiny little red ones here. Okay, um, so like these little guys yep, right here? The, the cherries. And we've got a chalk cherry, which is that one. Nice. And we've got a yellow cherry, which is that one. And then we go to the grapes, and we're going to get some really big grapes, but they're still very green. So this is a grape shape. Um, so, but then we go right up to the big beef steaks as well. 
Okay, well, that's fantastic. So, and again, like I was saying, we, uh, we, we grow these in our garden to hand out to our clients, right? Absolutely. Right yeah. on. Fantastic. Yeah. We don't sell any of our produce except garlic. Except for garlic. Yeah, yeah. which okay. is a, a fundraiser to continue to grow next year. Fantastic. So, all we really need are these lovely cherry tomatoes, uh, a cucumber, so this is just a regular field cucumber. What's the difference between a field cucumber and the English cucumbers you see at the grocery store? The English ones are normally hot house grown, whereas okay. a field cucumber is literally grown in the in field. In the field, yeah. yeah, okay. And then of course you've got the little pickler. You've mm -hmm. got the tiny little gherkin, which is about that size. And then you've got the picklers that can go rather large if you leave them too long. But the pickler always has a lot of spines on it. That's okay. the difference between the smooth skins, which are the field or the English hot house type. No real difference in flavor? No. No, okay, cool. The pickle is just a, a denser flesh so that you can... So they're crisper they, when they yeah. pickle. Okay, yeah. awesome. And then we have an yeah. onion. Our onions didn't take too well this year, so <laughs> we're, we're kind of cheating and we've got this lovely... But again, I'm using a Vidaya onion, which is yeah. one of the sweeter onions. Right on, perfect. And then with just a few seasonings, so we'll get started. I like to just kind of... Again, I like to use the cherry tomatoes because they're small, they're a burst of flavor, and again it's easy because I yeah. don't have to cut them. So what I will do is I'll take the bigger ones and I'll just have them and pop them in like this and any which way. But the smaller ones, I am just going to put in whole and uh, we've just washed them. Again, if you want to meticulously cut every one of them, you absolutely can, but I just put them in like that. And then the onion, we are just going to simply slice really, really easily. Um, and there we go. So you don't just grow here, do you, Allison? You, uh, you go, you farm here, and then when you go home, you farm again, don't you? Seven day week. Seven Sixteen days. hours a day at and the Al moment. Uh, yep. And Allison, you make pickles too, don't you? That's right. That's yeah. fantastic. And pickles and jams. And jams. Yeah. From or our local, you know, our own fruit as from well. From your own yeah. fruit. Yeah. So what do you grow on your farm? Okay. So principally we do garlic. Okay. And um, we do berries. So we do raspberries, gooseberries, blackberries, black currants, red currants. That's about it. Yeah. You should open a U pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'd have to keep it nice and tidy <laughs> at the moment. I can go uh, in. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, perfect. So yeah, U pick might be a little bit harder work than it is <laughs> it to is. have a. Uh, Perfect. Rather than so have a scruffy section where I can just sort of pull the weeds apart and get the berries out. <laughs> there you go. So I've sliced my onions really thin. I just like them like this. You can dice them if you want, but you kind of want to taste the onion. And if you're not a big fan of onion, uh, you can omit the onion. Yeah. If Absolutely. we had a hard time growing them and you don't have them in your garden, <laughs> you can omit them. But I like the onion, and I'm kind of looking to ha remake a memory is what yeah. I, we're doing yeah. here today yeah. with my grandma's I can't salad. live without onion in my salads. No, neither can I. And then we're going to... Just peel the cucumber. Again, the skins of cucumbers are thick, and depending on when you pick them, mm -hmm. um, yeah. they might be a little too... Yeah, field cucumbers especially. The hothouse ones you could possibly get away without having to. Now, I've seen some yellow ones in our garden <laughs> as of late. Are they field cucumbers <laughs> that just haven't ripened, or is that a different type of cucumber? They're picklers that have gone too far. Oh, they're picklers that have gone too <laughs> they far. They couldn't find them under the leaves. Ah, okay. So, okay. Yeah. That, that's neat to know. So, uh, they're, not, uh, they're not a special bre uh, no, no. breed there are, cucumber. There are some yellow cucumbers available. Okay. But, uh, yeah. But uh, these ones are just that uh, we didn't see them under the leaves. There we go. Again, I don't know if this is true or not, but I always rub the ends. My grandmother used to oh. say it pulls the bitter out. Um, I've never seen that. I'm a little superstitious when it comes to that, so I just <laughs> do it. Good. I've never seen that. I'm just going to slice this lengthways. And then we'll just pull the seeds out. I don't mind the seeds, but a lot of people don't like mm. the seeds. People with, uh, well, I guess, Crohn's disease and things yeah. like that yeah. who can't have seeds. Um, you kind of want to just take that out. So just grab a regular old teaspoon and then just gently. Ha, I'm learning something. Mm. I normally cut them in quarters and then take a knife to them. Well, yeah, I mean, no, just yeah. like this because it's soft enough and then you have a lovely boat. And uh, side note, then you can fill this with uh, cream cheese oh, and, yes. and, and you have a little bit of an hors d'oeuvre going there as well. There we go. And you do the same thing with zucchinis and then you fill them with other stuffing that can yes. be other things. So there's practical application to this. And again, there we go. 
So we'll take these seeds, we'll just throw those out, and then you can either dice them, half moon them, any way you choose to cut them. And there we go, so I'm just going to slice them thin. So I slice them really, really thin, Allison, because yep. I want them to absorb the flavor of the oils yes. as quickly as possible. Otherwise you go to chunk with the flavoring on the outside. Absolutely. Well, not. exactly. And again, you want to again when you're making salads, you want to make sure that you can get a little bit of everything in every bite. Yeah. I hate going to restaurants and you get a big Caesar salad and you pull out and there's a leaf about that big, and then you have to you shouldn't have yeah. to use a f knife for yeah. your salad. Nope. There we go. We'll get that chopped up just like this. Lovely sharp knife. Lovely sharp <laughs> knife. Exactly. You need to work with a sharp knife. There we go. And then we'll add that to this. And I mean, it's super simple. And I just mix it all together and see the lovely colors. Just so nice. Now you can also take herbs from the garden and, uh, and put those in there too. So basil or oregano or any kind of thyme and mix it in there too. But if you just want to keep it really simple and basic, this is all you do. We'll grab a little bit of pepper, roughly about, oh, a couple teaspoons are to taste, really. I just kind of pepper it so it kind of loosely covers the top. That gives me an idea. And then a little bit of salt. Same idea, same amount and to taste. And then a couple teaspoons of celery seed. Celery seeds have a nice pop and a little crunch, and it kind of brightens things up. Um, I really, really like it. Uh, I know I've had them in pickles before, but it's kind of uh, a go-to, and uh, yeah. that's what I like. Um, there we go. And then all I'm going to do is we're going to add some oil and some vinegar. Oil and vinegar, really simple dressing. So about three tablespoons of vinegar. I'm using white wine vinegar, but you can use uh, red wine vinegar if you want. You can use apple cider vinegar if you want. You can use regular old distilled vinegar. Uh, it all depends on what kind of flavor profile you want to get. I just want a nice delicate flavor. Um, you could stop like this and not put any oil in it if you don't want it greasy. <laughs> It'd be really nice and bright, but I like the oil. It gives it more of a nice vinaigrette, and then you'd be able to oil, uh, offer it as a salad option here. So. There we go. Couple tablespoons right there. And there we have it. Perfect. A lovely salad that came directly from our gardens. Thank you so much for joining me today, Allison. It was great having you on and learning more about the gardens. The Greener Village is the Greener Village because of these gardens, or part of the reason where the Greener Village is because of these gardens. Thank you so much for showing us a little bit about what we do today. And uh, again, yeah, stay tuned because Allison and I do a plots to plate preserving uh, thing in the fall. Um, hopefully with restrictions loosening up, we'll be able to have an in-person uh, thing. So, yeah. perfect, so join us then. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me today, Allison. Thank you, it was great. <laughs>